I have not met this next gal, although I have, uh, I have admired her performances and her talent for some time. She's, uh, Sally starred in three different television series, uh, Gidget, The Flying Nun, The Girl with Something Extra. She won an Emmy Award for an outstanding performance that she did in a, a, a show called Sybil, and she is currently starring in Norma Ray, which is a film which uh, apparently is uh, her most demanding role to date. It's, it's a pleasure to have her here. Would you welcome Miss Sally Field. <laughs> You're here on a crazy night. Yes, I can see that. And this is absolutely silly. Bizarre. Bizarre. Yes. That's, how well, that's are you? Good. I'm fine. How have you been? Just fine. How have you been? I've been fine. Good. That's good. How's camp been? Some we sound like two kids camp, at camp, camp, don't we? Camp was good. Camp did you, was did real you go good. to camp as a, as a No, as a I kid? never went to camp. I feel very left out. Yeah. I've always been left out. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. I don't know why. I've always been a sheep in search of flock. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I was kicked out a lot, actually. We had clubs in, in high school, in junior high school, Y clubs. Oh, and if you don't get in, you're Yeah, uh, well, I was the size. littlest one. For some reason, I, I would be in for a while. You're smaller than I thought you were. I don't know why. When you walked around, you yeah, were... Yeah, and I have, you know... Yeah. I'm very small. Oh. No, no, that was for my shoes, not my legs. Mm. Did something show when I did that? Oh, my God. Well, the crowd are a little animalistic tonight. Yes, they... So. they... So were you, were anyway, you asked they, they to join to, the club? Yeah, I, I was in the clubs with all the best girls, but I was the one that they liked to kick out for some reason. They would, they would choose one time. I mean, this has nothing to do with any of the notes, but yeah. one time, now, I, I never thought girls were this bizarre, but I, I understand now what, what, you know, how girls can go different ways. I mean, they don't necessarily always like boys, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I didn't at the time. I mean, they kind of, I think some of them liked me in a way that they weren't aware of. Oh, you mean it was you know, an, an uncomfortable relationship? Well, I might have gotten into it now. I mean, it might have been a good time. I mean, I understand that kind of stuff. What they did was, first they dressed me up like a clown. And this the old a slumber, clown trick. Yes, this is a slumber party. Yeah. They dressed me up like a clown and put the whole thing on and the face on, and then they threw me outside and locked the door, and there was no place to go because they were all the, the guys around. You couldn't go to their houses and say, could I use your phone? I mean, you looked yeah. like a fool. Then they brought me in. They took all my clothes off of me and put chunky peanut butter all over my body. And then they threw me in the pool. We're, we're getting to Hackett's dreams again. <laughs> uh, I mean, with the, with the chunky peanut butter. Yes, it was, it was very strange. Do you, you have bizarre dreams since we were talking about dreams? That, dreams are intriguing because they say it's all locked into the subconscious and these things stream out and you can go back to childhood and remember names when you wake up that you would not have remembered while you're conscious. You have those kind of bizarre dreams um, where you fly. Oh, no, I did that in real life. Well, that's right, of course. Yes, it was called The Flying Nun. I yes, did that I know for that. years, yeah. so I tried to avoid dreaming about it after that. It was, yeah. it was tough. Doing The Flying Nun was, was hard. I, I had a... Um, the guy who flew me, as it were... <laughs> you tell him what that means, <laughs> I mean, with, with a wire. Uh, the, there were a crane operator man. You know, we had a big crane with an arm on it with wires, and uh, there was a certain man who was responsible for flying me, which sounds rather strange. And he had a, a problem, a small problem, but he was an alcoholic. <laughs> and, uh, oh, hello, he's up there. <laughs> As a result, he used to land me in a lot of bizarre places. Yeah. On, on fire hydrants or it's, uh, in the ocean, you know, out in the middle the right, of it. Not the right guy for that kind of No, no, and I'd be like, like uh, 70 feet in the air and he'd run me about 50 miles an hour into a wall. <laughs> and it's... It was real hard to come out of that feeling good about yourself. <laughs> that shakes you a little bit. Destroys your confidence. You know, I, I don't want to ask you a question that sounds like a fan magazine type of stuff, but you, you are mentioned in the, you know, the photo play and all the fan magazines all the time as yes. being, uh, I want to choose the right word here, girlfriend or chum of, of, of Bert, Bert Reynolds, right? Yes, that's and, right. Uh, when, I, when I was going with my wife, they, they referred to us as, as my gal pal. Which I thought was kind of a dumb thing. I didn't exactly know what they were trying to say. Gal pal. Gal pal. Yes. How would you describe your relationship with Bert? Um, um, uh, lovers. Oh, lovers. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, see, I didn't want to come out and I, say something like that yeah. because I really didn't. Because yeah, I it's, think it's, it's hard to say that to me. I mean, I have a. You, you know, do. Like you have that little kind of. Sweet kind of. Look. Probably, you know, you look like you'd have two pom poms. We're lovers. Like, hey, let's face it. Are you really? <laughs> 
My gosh. Yeah, I hope my grandmother's not watching. Was she pretty old-fashioned? Was she? Oh yeah, uh, my grandmother's uh, my grandmother Joy. Hi, Joy. She's uh, she's real old-fashioned. She has uh, uh, she's 112. I mean, you've got to be old-fashioned when you're 112. Yes. Yes. And um, would she, she be disenchanted and unhappy if, if she heard you say that you were? I think all of a sudden her hearing aid would go off. See, that's something that even 10, 12 years ago, if somebody said that on this show, everybody would be very shocked. I don't say, know. Oh, maybe people are shocked. Maybe I've just lost. I don't a think lot so. Out there. I don't think so. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, is it? I, I don't think so. I, I don't need dreams. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's the real thing. And it adds life, doesn't it? Boy, yes. I tell ya. Okay. <laughs> We're going to come back in just a moment and follow up on this uh, documentary in just a moment. Hey, Sally, I do want to I do want to mention the uh, yes. The movie, Norma Ray, because usually what happens, people come on, we start talking, we have a wonderful time, you, you finish the show, and then the, the picture people come and say, how oh, come you never mentioned yeah. the... Then they you shot this in Opelika? Is that, is that Opelika, Alabama. Opelika, Alabama. Yeah. Opelika, Alabama. Yeah. Holy and, uh, Opelika would have a name. Like yes. <laughs> it's a wonderful town, actually. I loved it. Uh, but you haven't seen the film. Which, no, not yet. Yeah, it's, it's hard to talk about. You know, it's hard to come... I hate those people that come out and say, God, I've done this movie, you well, should see like it, and then you run down what it's about. It sounds so boring. It's now, like trying to talk like a book. You can't... Uh, yeah, you can't. can't. I mean, if I said to you... If I said to you, Norma Ray is about a, uh, uh, a contemporary Southern woman working in a textile mill with two children, one illegitimate, who organizes a union in the textile mill All with right. the help of a Jewish union worker that comes in, I mean... What does that? What does that sound like to you? It sounds like a girl who works in a textile mill with one child, illegitimate, yeah. and a Jewish union organizer comes in. I mean, would you go and see that? I don't know. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. It's hard to do that. Yeah. What happened? I mean. It... Well, it's a very triumphant film. Yeah. Um, it's it's like Frank Capra in that way that the people are good and everything yeah. has that kind of joyous feeling in the end and she and she wins but it's really it's kind of like a character study and you can't and it's hard to sit down and say well I'm I'm absolutely wonderful in this film you're gonna love me um, everybody's jumping around about it it's really scary for Sounds me I good. feel like I'm out trick-or-treating and I've got all Hershey bars you know <laughs> we've, we've got a short clip now of yeah, course this is, a... it's always difficult to to give any kind of an yeah, indication it, of a picture with a small uh, piece of film very difficult it, Ron Liebman plays the Jewish union organizer who comes to this very small town in the south and she literally has the scene where she says are you a jew right i mean just never met a jewish person and um they in the context of the film they become friends and they remain friends throughout the film which is very unusual and they work together and and he helps her grow up and she helps him come to grips with what life is really about okay and this is just kind of a scene watch the monitor and working. we'll show you a small scene here I'm not going to ask the obvious I'm question that everybody would know. What Let me is. ask her. It's just a swimming scene. What? Were, you swimming both, scene. were you supposed to be naked in the water? Yeah, but we weren't. Okay. Is that when you found out he was Jewish? Yeah. <laughs> just say no comment. All right, just... No comment. You're okay. always safe with no comment. No comment is good. We'll, we'll take a short intermission and we'll be right back. Not right. We're talking with Buddy Hackett and Sally Field. Yeah, you know, I mentioned to you that during the break that we had never met before. No, we never and, have. Um, this is my first time. Because you apparently do not go out much. Unlike the girl no. when you're in Burt's movies, you always seem to be exuberant, outgoing, and so forth. And I get the feeling that in... Uh... I'm outgoing, but I do it at home. Yeah. In other words, you're an extrovert, but you're only an extrovert at home where right, you feel comfortable. Right, right. I, I hermitize myself. As a matter of fact, um, I, I was coming to see you for the first time. And, yeah. Uh, and I... I know that you and Bert are very, very close. So yeah, uh, we I are. talked to him and I said, help me. I mean, I want to be just wonderful. I want Johnny just to love me to death and just say, come always to this show. So he said, okay, I'll help you out. I mean, we're close and I'll give you a list of little do's and don'ts. So. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> this is called um, Tips on Johnny. Now, does he actually... Yeah, he you? knows you very well. Okay. And you guys work really, really well together. Yeah, we get a little crazed together. A little crazed. So we have, I have a, 
three basic rules here. He's kind of kept it short. All right. The first one is, is that I, I, I should give you no compliments. No, because you're, you're shy and you, it, uh, it makes you uncomfortable. And uh, so okay. I, I'm, I'm not really to tell you that I adore you or that oh. I think you're a genius, for instance. No, you're not supposed to say that. No, no, I can't say that because it makes you feel uncomfortable. That's, or, that's true. Or that uh, you're... Of course, a certain amount of discomfort sometimes is uh, <laughs> but, good for one. Uh, but yeah. I know that's true. I am basically, yeah. Uh, basically I feel shy uncomfortable. And, um, I shouldn't say that you're... I've always thought you're probably the sexiest man to ever set foot on the old tube. Well, I don't think you have to go that far. <laughs> I mean, see, you know, no, no, you are embarrassed. You see, you now that's see, it embarrasses you and yeah. it goes a little too far. And I, and I certainly shouldn't tell you that I grew up watching you. No, 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 no. I shouldn't no. say that. Or, that's that's or, not funny. Uh, especially not that you were you were my treat. If I was a good girl, <laughs> I got to stay up and watch Isn't you. Isn't that you cute? Know what I mean? <laughs> I, I Isn't she adorable? Yes. <laughs> he told me don't say any of that. <laughs> yeah. So I won't. I okay. just. I won't say any of that. I will now you don't see him if you're a bad girl because you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> All of those things. Next, he said. Right. He, he said in this, though, there, there are some positive things. He, like, he, he said you, what you like is for women to come out and be aggressive. I mean, he not did. physically. I mean, verbally. Well, you know? I think it's nice for women, you know, if they just don't sit sometimes. They get a little, you know, yeah. they, they say something. Well, he yeah. said it would be good if I could come out and give you a little shot. Yeah. You know, and you, you like to work off of that. A couple of good, solid shots. Oh. And, and I said, well, that's not really my personality. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm like what I see. I'm cute and sweet. And I, right. I, you know, he said, well, think real hard, you know, and find something about Johnny you don't like. Right. So, I mean, Johnny, I thought for days, right. I mean, three days, what do I like least? I mean, I don't want to use hate. I mean, that's a strong word, you know? Yeah. Hate is real strong. So I thought and thought and thought. I mean, what do I feel? I, I, I guess I would just have to say, I hate your suits. <laughs> I mean, I, it's that I don't like plaids and, and stripes. Well, I mean, I hate them. This is a little stripe, but this is not any yeah. plaids or anything. Tonight. Yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, I hate it. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, I thought you'd like me to come out and give you that shot. Yeah, that's, that's real nice. <laughs> I mean, Bert, he, he told me that's... Bert helped you out with it. Bert helped me out. He, he's, Good old Bert. He's always helping me out. Uh-huh. Um, and, and lastly, he told me that, of course, I know it to be true, you are the king of physical comedy. I mean, there isn't anybody... I couldn't... I mean, I, should, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. That is a compliment. But I know you and Bert, I mean, when you guys get out here, you go a little crackers. Yes, we have. And you have such a good time. But I, being this short... I mean, cute little woman. Pixie. We, yeah, Pixie, and, and you would feel uncomfortable being this gentleman that you are doing any of that physical kind of fun shtick stuff with yeah. me, you know? It just wouldn't work out. But. work off of this kind of stuff. I mean, you're pleased when you get to get your teeth into some physical shtick. Now, I know that, that it isn't fair because I'm this little short woman and, and right. you can't really, it can't be fulfilled because you can't come back at me with anything wonderful. Um, like, for instance, if I went... I'm short, I'm cute, and I'm all of that. I mean, I could, I, 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 I could, I could come over here and I could. What is going on with it? Oh, I'm sorry. I could do that, you know. And, and I mean, there's no way. That you could actually, you know, I mean, we couldn't really get into it. You know what I mean? What'd you say? You're crazy. You 
I mean, to be I'm, so sweet I'm, to you. Yeah, I, I know. Bert I, told you that, yeah, he said that this would be cute. It. He said you would love even if I went, you know. <laughs> Let me, let me explain something. Uh, yeah. Bert, Bert may have misinformed you. I think so, because I, uh... Right, Bert. How could he pick on a sensitive girl? What? You're mad. You and Bert must have some exciting evening at home. Not quite this exciting. I can't hear a thing you're saying. Uh, we're going to be back in a moment, I think. Don't go away. 